Next in the trilogy set, we have a film which is from the year 1987, and it is this film, which is Epidemic, and Epidemic, again, from 87, and this has, uh, this is directed by Lars von Trier, and screenplay by Lars von Trier and Niels Versel, and also we have among its very, very fascinating cast, we have, among others, uh, Niels Versel and Lars von Trier and others, and uh, such as uh, Clay's Custom Hansen and others, so uh, this is an Uto Kier and others, I should say, so uh, very fascinating uh, cast, and very fascinating film as well. We have here a film that could be said to be a film within a film or a type of meta f version of filmmaking as well. We have a story about the act of creation, the act of filmmaking, the act of trying to make a film and the, the, uh, the demands of filmmaking in terms of trying to write the story, trying to conceive of the story, trying to figure out uh, conditions of producing and the like. And then we also have, at the same time, a type of, of story within story about uh, a disease or a type of epidemic or illness or um, uh, a type of uh, contagion or a uh, some kind of uh, uh, potential uh, maybe uh, uh, well, epidemic, I suppose, yes, uh, that is occurring. And we have the efforts of trying to figure out what's going on, maybe a sort of uh, discussion or storyline involving the doctors and scientists that are trying to figure out through some kind of bureaucratic mess, again, a, a swirl of confusion and, and heightened sense of, of urgency and panic but also a sense of mystery as well. Uh, what the heck is going on in terms of uh, these various avenues of disease and infection and also trying to get a sense of discovery and ailment and also cure or the p potential of cure on the one hand, but also laid bare is the act of storytelling itself, the act of, of trying to tell the story within the story uh, and the act of the filmmakers or the artists that are trying to tell the story in a way uh, that will be maybe commercially viable or somehow or another artistically possible or feasible. And then intertwined in this, we have another sensor display, much like we saw in the earlier film, The Element of Crime. Uh, the purposely and po poetically applied confusion of the work uh, that I think is part of the fun of the film, that's part of the engagement of the film, namely the way in which the line between quote-unquote reality and fiction as embodied in the film epi Epidemic, how the line blurs, and the, and the line, the blurring of the line occurs oh so subtly but also not so subtly. We have visual cues and visual clues that are indicative of the blurring of the line or maybe the, the transformation from quote-unquote reality to quote-unquote fiction and then uh, vice versa uh, in terms of the way in which the black and white photography is used, the way that uh, certain uses of color, let me put it that way, are employed in a very uh, in a very uh, almost um, uh, in a very almost jarring sort of memorable way. Uh, let me. I don't want to go into too much detail, except to say that this has a very, very engaging and I think uh, uh, a very unique way that it uses color, even against the context of its black and white photography. On the one hand, and also we have the way in which fantasy and reality and a sense of historical past or reckoning with a historical past or clues or grammatical points or symbols of a historical past seem to be uh, uh, interwoven into the context of a type of panic or a type of tragedy or a type of mystery or a medical thriller of sorts that is part of, I think, the quote-unquote fictional world of the storytelling of Epidemic. And so we have a sense of the past, but it's also a fantasy uh, heightened uh, sense of the past. But it also has clues to reality, because again, we are reminded of, quote unquote, the reality realm, because of the fact that we are seeing the filmmakers before our very eyes playing certain roles. We also see the story of the storytelling itself. And so this is this interesting interplay between that which is, quote unquote, real and that which is, quote unquote, fiction. And I dare say to that, that I think forms a really lovely basis for further embodiment and exploration of what one might call 
the ways in which films like Epidemic and others in the Europe trilogy tend to try to lead the viewer into a discussion or at least consideration or pondering of uh, a reckoning with the historical past. And so if you have a reckoning of a historical past in the context of a film that seems to be blurring the line between reality and fiction, in other words, blurring the line between the reality of the past and the fictionalized remembering of the past, and I think that leads to some very interesting avenues indeed of possibility. But that's one way of looking at this film, or potentially so. Another way of looking at this film is, uh, again, a type of a virtuoso of filmmaking uh, style and technique. And it also has with it that sense of the hardened sense of trying to capture almost a quasi or pseudo documentary feel or perhaps let me take that back maybe documentary is not the right way to work word it but perhaps a better way to word it is the way in which the film tries in a sense perhaps embedded in its visual flair how it tries to or endeavors to seek to capture a type of truth within the realms of its cinematic trappings and if we think of the film or if we think of, of traditions of cinema, especially where Lars von Trier and other of his contemporaries are, are uh, concerned, uh, especially when we think perhaps of other examples like Dogma 95 and others, I think we can see a sense of a, of a film or an aesthetic that is perhaps a seeking to or perhaps purposely trying in some degree anyway to capture a sense of quote-unquote truth uh, using... Uh, a, a cinema techniques and style that might be said to be quote unquote low budget or uh, maybe using uh, things that are not trying to call them attention to themselves in terms of of a, a cinema bravura on the one hand but that's part of the enticing nature of a film like epidemic because that's not that's not the only uh that's that's not where the film ends because the film I would suggest turns that concept, that aesthetic concept on its head because it also within its same pages, cinematic pages, gives us flourishes that are very evidently cinematic, that are very evidently purposefully artistically applied that remove oneself from quote unquote the layer of reality. So I think that back and forth, that type of confusion and swirl of uh, aesthetic drives I think is what gives the film a lot of its potency and strength and indeed I go back to that idea of confusion, the purposely applied confusion of Lars von Trier's cinema. I think it's uh, exemplified so well in a film like Epidemic. It's one of my favorite films by Lars von Trier, in fact, because uh, I love how it it uh, not just blurs the line, but it also gives us a sort of compelling sense of almost alternate realities, of parallel universes. Uh, and those parallel universes perhaps are not so parallel, or perhaps there is a way in which one can read the film, such as the parallelism is in fact not so parallel uh, to begin with, and, and perhaps there is a more unity than meets the eye. So uh, that type of, of uh, potential uh, various uh, interpretation or interpretive quality of this film, I think, is what it gives it its strength. Also, at the same time, uh, there are these great contradictions that are applied all throughout. There is a way in which the film seems to want to seek a sense a, f a fantastical heightened uh, cinematic storytelling on the one hand but it's also very evidently a low budget film on the other and there is a way in which the film employs a sense of stylized uh, black and white photography on the one hand but also at the same time there are moments when uh, certain stylistic trappings of color are used to great effect there is a way in which this film seems to be seeking to give a sense of a quote unquote almost a cinema verite type of storytelling of the uh, of the filmmaking part, the metaverse part of this film on the one hand, whereas at the same time it is giving us a, a parallel story that is very evidently and very obviously uh, a type of, of a constructed tale. Uh, but then when those various points converge and collide and indeed almost in an interesting way, and I say this in a very uh, in a very complimentary way, almost cause damage to each other. I think that's where you get a lot of the cinematic fireworks of this. And for me, therefore, a work like Epidemic is uh, very, very potently exciting indeed. It's one of my favorite works by Von Trier, as I indicated earlier. So uh, this is, uh, in a nutshell, uh, the work, which is, once again, uh, from the year 1987. And it is this film, which is Epidemic. Now let's turn to the supplements that can be found on the Blu-ray disc for the film Epidemic. So uh, we have, of course, the film itself. And then also we have the 
commentary track, which can be found with Epidemic. And this is from 2005. And this is with uh, Niels Versel and Lars von Trier. And it's in English. Uh, and again, from 2005. Uh, very casual. Uh, I love the casual nature. Again, they are, cl- they are working together. And they also have a, a personal and professional relationship uh, that found uh, a form in works like Epidemic as well. So it's great to have their commentary background here. It's, again, very casual, uh, very much to close colleagues and friends talking. Uh, they talk to about uh, the, the use of color, uh, the very memorable use of color, uses of filters, and uh, uh, the way in which uh, sets were used or locations were used uh, in, uh, in how they had to work with the limitations of the budget. Uh, very, very low budget. They talk to you about how they got the funding for this film. It's a very interesting story about the funding and uh, what they needed to do in order to calculate it carefully in order to be able to make a film like Epidemic based on the funding requests and the applications that they were making. Uh, and also the script or lack of script, whatever the case may be. Uh, and also uh, uh, links to other works, uh, The Kingdom is re- referenced to for those who know the other works of Von Trier and others. Uh, Dreyer is mentioned as we talked about uh, other uh, links to uh, references to uh, the past. I mean, Dreyer has a very indirect and direct connection to work like Epidemic, so uh, uh, very important stuff indeed. Uh, uh, and um, uh, in terms of uh, the work by uh, uh, Benson. And so uh, we also have the uh, Indirection or the way the cast is employed here. There's comments about uh, Udo Kier uh, and others, and also uh, the details of uh, reality or film within film. Uh, the details of who appears, who emerges. So we have also the film, uh, stories about the film, which is about a film, which is about a film. So that type of parallel, almost. ad infinitum way of looking at this film and it gets hinted at very nicely in the commentary track here from 2005 so uh, here's the Versal Von Trier commentary track so please check it out if you can uh, it's definitely worth uh, worth a listen especially if you enjoyed the work Epidemic but also continued on with the supplements that's part of this uh, Blu-ray disc for Epidemic we have Portrait of Lars von Trier which is from 1991 and it's from Danish television it's approximately 32 minutes uh, it does talk about certain aspects of the. It talks about epidemic, but that's not the other film it talks. It does t- um, have mentions of of works like the element of crime. Uh, there is uh, some talk about uh, dreams and hypnosis and the uh, idea of of Germany and other points of Europe, especially in the context of, as I mentioned before, a reckoning with the historical past, a la the World War or the Second World War or the the European Wars, and also the way in which. Uh, cultural identity and a national historical identity is very much part of Lars von Trier and who he is or who he isn't uh, in his own words and this is also very much part of the biography of Lars von Trier especially when he makes films like Epidemic and a little bit later uh, Europa uh, and also there is a way in which uh, this this uh, you know, um, uh, there are moments I think of uh, almost uh, sexual explicitness in, in some uh, parts of this but uh, so uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily watch this uh, with uh, young children around, as it were, but uh, um, it's not in any way uh, too uh, off-putting, um, and I found it to be very amusing as well. Some uh, aspects of, uh, of sort of anecdotes that have to do with a sort of a cheeky way in which uh, uh, Lars von Trier uses humor and uses uh, uses sex as well. Uh, and and these conceptions too that I think find their way in some form or another uh, through these films again uh, sometimes in the context of a film like Epidemic or a film like The Element of Crime it might seem a bit uh, disturbing or uh, quite uh, quite challenging uh, but other times there is a sense too of winking to the audience and, and comedy and humor and we have this reminds us too that Lars von Trier also handles comedy and humor in his very Lars von Trier sort of way so uh, definitely worth checking out if you can this is Portrait of Lars von Trier from 1991 Uh, and then we have another anecdotes this time anecdotes from epidemic Uh, this is 17 minutes this is also from 2005 
and we have other people that are uh, appearing. Uh, Schlepperon is appearing again. Versal is appearing again. Uh, Nyholm, Udo Kier, uh, Michael Simpson, uh, Place uh, Henson is here uh, and mentioned as well, and others. So uh, they talk to about uh, this idea of hypnotism and uh, being in a trance, which is a very key part of this film or one of the key elements of this film, how that links to a sense of dream or fantasy and the reality of certain situations, how the reality of how scenes were filmed translated themselves into the actual scenes themselves uh, and uh, the film school aesthetic of the film uh, and there are some humor almost morbid witty and quite dark humor as well uh, hospital morbid scene humor and the like which also has links as I mentioned to works like um, the hospital it's or, I'm sorry the kingdom etc so uh, I think and then there's some interesting anecdotes about the taxi driver scene and, and the like so uh, and the budget constraints etc and how they uh, I think the filmmakers use the budget constraints and really turn those to their advantages in, in uh, so many ways. So this is the anecdotes. Uh, again, please check it out if you can. Definitely worth it. Approximately 17 minutes. And then we have um, uh, from Dreyer to Von Trier. And this is from, uh, this is approximately 13 minutes. And I mentioned before the uh, great uh, cinematography work uh, here, this is Henning Benson, and uh, Benson here is uh, featured in terms of his work with Dreyer, and also the the way, therefore, that the film epidemic, and then also in a broader context, the works of Von Trier, can be said to have very direct links to the aesthetic and and almost uh, philosophical qualities of the cinema of Dreyer. Uh, and there's some interesting anecdotes about uh, Benson himself, and uh, there's a really uh, charming anecdote about a tuxedo as well. So uh, please check it out if you can. Again, the look and f uh, feel of the film and the s visual style of the film is so important. And when we realize that there is a type of spiritual quality that has links to a cinematic past, I think it becomes oh so powerful indeed. So uh, you get that and then some when you watch this uh, from Dreyer to Von Trier, uh, approximately 13 minutes. So please check it out if you can. And then we have the trailer. So please, uh, uh, this is the supplements that can be found with the disc for Epidemic.